Stand up, everybody. Come on, stand up. Stand up. Clap your hands, everybody. Say, everybody, clap your hands. Say, I love technology. Say, I love technology. One more time. I love technology. I love technology. I'm looking at you, and if you're not clapping, I'm looking right at you. All right, everybody. Okay, that's all. I'm going to wrap it all ah, together here. Tech tools, not just programs and apps and equipment, but things to help you leave here and apply what you've heard and make a difference. Spoke today does video, but if you're not using video in your real estate business, just tell me, tell me why. Somebody tell me why. I don't like myself on camera. You don't like how you look, and you don't like how you sound. Well, here's the thing. Are you ready? It's how you look. <laughs> At least give them a warning ahead of time. <laughs> you got to get over yourself, like my friend Rose Hanfero taught me. It's, well, she says it more like, get over yourself already, right? <laughs> because it's how you look and sound. And it's not going away. To the equipment yeah. side of it. So the equipment. You don't need to purchase anything expensive. Okay, if somebody tells you you got to go out and buy an expensive camera and this thing and that and the other thing, they're in the business of selling equipment. Okay, all you need is in your pocket. Okay, the smartphone. <laughs> if you do not have a smartphone, what I would re recommend you do is slowly and quietly back out of the room, okay, and go to the nearest store and get one. Because in this day and age, if you're a real estate practitioner and you're not using a smartphone, you're out of business, quite clearly. So the first tool we have for using video, it's called a gimbal. And there's a number of manufacturers out there. There's Smove, S-M-O-V-E is one. And then its competitor, top competitor is DJI Osmo Mobile 2. They're both around $130, okay? But it gives you that smooth look like you're on a dolly taking the video. If you've ever taken a video and it looks like the Blair Witch Project, you guys remember that movie? Yeah. Where it's like, ah, oh, and it's shaking all over the place. You okay, need to always say, focus on progress, not perfection. Because too often you're like, no, I, I'm looking at Becca over here, Rebecca. Because too often you're researching, and you're researching, and you're researching, and you're researching, and you're researching, you're like, wait, I almost have it. If I could research one more thing, it will be perfect. You have to stop thinking and start doing, right? Good is good enough. If you focus on being perfect, you're never going to get it done. Why did YouTube become popular? Amateur video. It wasn't that it was professional, polished video. Everybody was so good looking and wonderful. No. There's a lot of ugly people on YouTube. About that. So gimbal's okay. your first one. Second one's a wide-angle lens. Man, I keep hitting this or something. Ah. I know, they should have given So the wide-angle lens. All you have to do is go onto Amazon. I'm not going to give you a specific brand, but just say wide-angle lens for my, and then plug in your device. Don't go super cheap. You could probably get them for $5, but they'll break the next day. All right, so wide-angle lens for your smartphone. Again, it should be anywhere from $25 to $50. It's, it'll make all the difference, especially if you're doing something related to real estate. You don't want to go, here's the kitchen, and then all they can see is a stove, right? Here's the bedroom. All they see is a bed. The wide-angle lens makes all the difference. So just the one I have actually just clips right onto my smartphone as well as my iPad. So it's multi-purpose. Mobile microphone. There's hardwired and wireless. So again, just go to Amazon, say hardwired mobile lapel microphone. I'm going to tell you a quick story. A friend of mine, we're going to call him Joe, because that's his name. <laughs> Hi, Joe. So we were at Lobby Day not too long ago, and, you know, great, I got my talking points all down, and I'm like, we're going to do a live video, this is fantastic. He, so he holds the phone, pretending this is a phone, right? Holds it. I'm like, today, we're here, nice hour, we're doing Lobby Day, boom, 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 all these great talking points. I felt like I nailed it out of the park. I'm getting all these messages from people going, is it a silent movie? I couldn't hear you. What's going on? So the video, when it posted, was like this.
And it's because my friend Joe <laughs> put his thumb over the microphone. Okay, because you know your smartphone, the microphone's right at the, the, the end. This is, pretend this is a smartphone, it's my clicker. It's right at the end here. So it's just normal for you to hold your phone like that and it's a very easy mistake to make. But I said, that's only gonna happen to me one time. So I purchased a hardwired mobile microphone. Best it can be. You know, the clips Apps, I'm gonna go through these quickly because I only have 20 minutes, but I'm gonna give you an app and I'm gonna tell you how I use it. All of these are screenshots from my mobile device. So it's not something I Googled and I said, this would be good for you. I'm gonna go through it quickly. Google Duo, you see on the top left. That's Google's mobile to mobile video conferencing. It only works mobile to mobile, but it's cross-platform. So that means regardless of whether you're an iPhone user, or you're an Android user, you don't have to create a Gmail account in order to use it. The second one from the left is Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts is cross-platform. It can go phone to tablet, phone to laptop, but the person has to create a Gmail account. So if you're dealing with an Apple lover, they're gonna get weird about that. They're gonna be like, ew, I don't wanna create a Gmail account in order to talk to you. Okay, an Apple person does have FaceTime, but then you both have to have FaceTime. So my best solution are the two, well, I'm trying to reference something that's no longer on the screen. All right, KindMaster. This is a mobile app for editing video on your, on your phone. So if you're on the road, like you are now, you don't, have to get, you don't have time to get back to your laptop, you want to put together a quick video, you can use KindMaster. It has all the same splits and stitches and, and voiceovers and copyright stuff that, that you need. Top right corner, BombBomb. If you ever heard me talk, I mentioned BombBomb in almost everything I do. I call it a video relationship manager. This is a great way to create a systematic way to communicate with your clients. Anything that I've ever heard, any question that I've heard more than once from a client, I create a video about it so that I can reference it every single time it's asked. You know, what's the pending process like? Do we need to get an inspection? What are some inspector names? What's the mortgage process like? How do I quote home insurance? All of these things. So now I've created a systematic approach. So I'm providing equal and ethical service to all of my clients. <sighs> social. So we talked about social media. It should go without saying, but I have to mention it anyways. You need an app for all of the social media you're gonna be doing. So you need Facebook, you need Instagram, you need Snapchat, you need Pages Manager. Gives you a lot more capabilities as far as managing your pages. WhatsApp and Messenger. WhatsApp and Messenger are group messaging apps. And if you don't know this, in China, WeChat has replaced the number one way people communicate. The number one way, meaning above text messaging, above phone calls, above emails. So what happens there likely will be coming here soon. And I, that's where WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp is actually owned by Facebook Messenger. That's why you saw Facebook Messenger change so much in, in the last two to three years. They were copying a lot of the features that WhatsApp had. Uh, Snapchat, it wasn't really talked about today, but you obviously need the app. In my opinion, we're starting to see the engagement go down just a bit as the stories become more popular on Instagram, but it's still a viable social media platform. And when you, people ask me, like, how do you do business on Snapchat? The answer is you don't. Snapchat is all about being yourself, right? Getting people the opportunity to get to know you, get to know your personality, and just be your authentic self. Because people are gonna like you for who you are. And if they don't, you don't need to do business with them anyways. Right? Some people will like you, some won't. So what? Next. You know, I get that phone call. What do we do? We grab a phone, we grab a piece of paper, we start writing the nearest piece of paper. It doesn't matter if it's a napkin, toilet paper, whatever it is, you start writing down that lead, right? So I write down that lead. Hop in, and in my market, my average sales price is about $123,576, more or less. So this was a $300,000 transaction, which is a fairly decent lead for us. I hop in the car, it's a beautiful day. I put it in the passenger seat, start driving, put the windows down, <laughs> jamming out. It was like slow motion. I was like, no! On the expressway, it goes out the window. What do you think I did? I stopped the car. I'm on the side of the expressway like this. 
like a homeless guy looking for that lead. State trooper pulls over. He's like, uh, sir, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going back to my car, sir. And I had to let it go, right? But I said, that, that's only going to happen to me one time. So now I'm still going to take that call, write it down on whatever piece of paper I can find, but you can take a picture of it, and now it's safe in my Evernote. So I know exactly where it is. You guys see? Okay, it's to the right of that, right? Uh, doodle. So have you ever had to schedule an appointment with multiple people, right? And, it, and you're like, you call them, they call you, the third person, what's good for you? Oh, Saturday at 3 o'clock, oh, that's not going to work. They call the next person over here. With Doodle, you can create the appointments that you're available, share that link with whoever is going to be a part of that meeting, and then they just click the dates that are best for them. Super efficient, eliminates unnecessary conversations, like I said. If this, then that, Sean actually brought this up probably five years ago, right? Four or five years ago, I think. But people weren't ready for it yet. And what it does is you can create what are called applets. So you can say, if I receive an attachment on my Google e email, take that attachment and save it in Evernote automatically. And they, have, they call them recipes or applets that are already created for those of you who are not tech savvy. So you can just select. So I have Google one Suite. Where... Google runs the world. We just live in it, right? So we have Google... Calendar I use, Folio is a real estate-based program built for Google. It'll automatically take your emails and say, hey, this looks like this is a transaction related to real estate. It names it by the address, and then it says, who are you in the transaction? And then you select whether you're the buyer's agent, the seller's agent, and it kind of select, and it automatically adds each and every email related to that transaction into the appropriate folder within Folio. Google Hangout, we talked about Google Duo, we talked about, and then voice.google.com. If you have ever had a full voicemail, and I know who you are because I call you and it goes, the voicemail is currently full. Google Voice is the answer. You can actually forward your voicemail to Google Voice. It will transcribe it for you, it'll create a WAV file for you, and it'll send you an email with it. So if you're sitting here in a class like this, you can actually look at it and see what the, what the message is and decide whether you actually need to return the phone call. Last one is A Wallet Cloud. It's not really a wallet, but it's, this is where you store all of your passwords. Okay, you do have to remember one password to get in there. It does have a capital letter and a symbol and a number, but it's only one. I keep everything in here, credit card numbers, frequent flyer ID, everything I, in my life is within this app. That's how secure it is, and that's how confident I am in there. That being said, if something does happen to your passwords, I am not being held responsible. <laughs> okay, Anthony, was that good, good enough? Okay, thank you. So in closing, I just want you to embrace technology, right? And, and I want to thank CJ Del Vecchio for allowing us the opportunity here to share our tech message. And then just, you guys got this. I believe in you. And take your technology to the next level. Thank you.